Global Ethics Corner from the Carnegie Council. It has been a particularly deadly year for militant Islamic opponents of U.S. military power. First, in May, Navy SEALs killed al-Qaeda founder Osama bin Laden in a safe house in Pakistan. Then, in June, U.S. drone missiles killed three senior al-Qaeda operatives in Yemen. A similar fate befell the Yemeni-American Imam Anwar al-Awlaki in September. That same month, drones killed al-Qaeda chief operations officer Abu Hafs al-Shari in Pakistan. According to USA Today reporter David Jackson, about 20 senior al-Qaeda leaders have been targeted and killed by American forces since 2009. This record of success has broad domestic support. An October poll found that 63% of the country approves of the way the current administration is handling the war on terrorism. These high-profile targets mark a departure, however. Previously, many of the ethical dilemmas presented by the war on terrorism centered on the treatment of detainees. Was it legal to imprison enemy combatants offshore in Guantanamo Bay or at CIA black sites in foreign lands? Did the so-called enhanced interrogation techniques approved by Justice Department lawyers amount to torture? Many thought that they did. But this debate has receded, as targeted killings have become the norm. Guantanamo Bay once housed nearly 450 prisoners, and that population has been reduced to about 175 in the past few years. But the fact that offshore U.S. military prisons remain open is testament to the difficult question of how to properly handle Islamic militants bent on destroying Western civilization. Another difficult question looms just as large. Are we killing our most high-profile enemies to avoid sending them to military prison? What do you think? This is Terence Hurley from the Carnegie Council. Made possible by the Carnegie Council for Ethics and International Affairs. Post a comment at www.carnegiecouncil.org.